Shadow Home Affairs and Cyber Security Minister James Patterson. James, I want to start off with Yevgeny Prigozhin, this big news out of Russia this morning. What's your response to that? Peter, as you would remember from your time as a foreign correspondent, the fog of war often obscures the facts and sometimes it takes some time before the truth emerges about events like this. And the reports this morning are contradictory. There are reports there was a second plane uh, that he might have really been on that was also registered to him. There are reports that the plane crashed on its own and others that it shot down, some that his body has been confirmed, others that contradict that. Even reports that uh, his Wagner fighters uh, in Belarus are uh, getting ready to march on Moscow. All of it is highly speculative live at this stage, but what it does demonstrate is there remains tensions within the leadership of the Kremlin, that there is dissent about uh, the direction and the handling of the war. And in authoritarian systems, leaders like Vladimir Putin look impenetrable and untouchable one day and can be gone the next, and that's very hard to predict. Uh, otherwise, I think we are set for a continuing stalemate in the war in Ukraine as both sides struggle to establish very clear supremacy over one or the other. So there has been confirmation that has come from the Wagner Group, though in the, in the uh, form of a telegram that says that Yevgeny Prigozhin uh, mm. is dead, blaming Russian traitors for that. Are you, are you doubting that's the case? Um, remembering that there's an old saying in Russia, nothing is ever as it seems. Exactly right, Pete. I'm just urging caution. It may well end up being proven to be the case, but because these are early reports, I don't think we should jump to firm conclusions. There are others speculating uh, with some uh, authority that uh, this is an elaborate plot to disguise or fake his own death, which is plausible in, in circumstances like these. So I think we should just be cautious uh, until there is clear, hard evidence. Uh, this is not a part of the world in which you can rely on first reports, as you right. would know well. Yeah. Uh, in, let's finish here, though, on, on this topic. In the grand scheme of things, does it change anything when it comes to Vladimir Putin's leadership or his approach to the war in Ukraine? The truth is, Pete, we will not know what changes anything until we finally see something change. It is the nature of an authoritarian system. If you are a dissident in an authoritarian system, you don't come out and own that uh, dissent until you have the opportunity to make a change and to strike at a leader. And so that's why uh, authoritarian leaders often look very strong until the moment in which they fall and okay. we look back afterwards and say, why didn't we predict it? How didn't we see it? So I would just say continue to watch this space. Anything could happen at any time. Prime Minister has given a plea to business last night, James. He needs their help in achieving climate targets as well as advanced manufacturing and a few other points as well. Uh, what's your initial thoughts on his speech? Well, in some respects, the relationship between big business and the Albanese government is very cosy. Uh, they're in a complete agreement on ramming the voice down the, vo the throats of the Australian people and trying to hoodwink them into supporting a, a risky, divisive change with no detail. Uh, they are on a unity ticket when it comes to record high levels of immigration, which they are trying to obscure from the Australian people. But they are at a fundamental disagreement on issues like industrial relations, which I think is a difference that is going to be very hard to bridge. Because what the Albanese government has a plan to do is massively re-regulate our labour market, make it much more inflexible uh, and much less modern. And that is going to have very real implications for productivity and economic growth and eventually employment as well. The Treasurer has already said that a GST rise and a drop in corporate tax is not in his plans. Do you think it should be to increase productivity? Well, I think that um, tax reform, holistic tax reform that makes our tax system more efficient is, of course, something that we should always have a conversation about. But I deeply distrust Labor governments when it comes to tax. I don't believe that any change to the tax system, whether it's to company tax, GST, personal income tax or any other, wouldn't just be cover for a revenue raising exercise. I mean, in his intergenerational report out this week, uh, Jim Chalmers lays out a blueprint for lower growth and higher taxes. Now, if government spending, which seems to be the only plan that this government has to grow the economy, actually helped grow economies, well, then mm. Cuba and North Korea would be the richest economies in the world. But it doesn't, and they're not. And so we actually do need genuine productivity-enhancing reforms, which this government has no ideas at all about. OK, back to climate and this intergenerational report. It's forecasting the impacts of climate change are going to cost taxpayers $420 billion over the next four years. The costs, lost productivity, tourism, agricultural costs, etc. How concerned should we be about that? 
Well, climate change is a serious challenge which the Liberal and National parties also take seriously, and that's why we're very open to exploring uh, low emissions technology that is reliable and uh, like, like nuclear power. Uh, they're the only ways you're going to realistically achieve the climate targets that this government has set out for our country, because we know that the intermittent in increase in renewable energy is just driving up the costs for Australians' uh, families. Uh, they are really struggling right now with the cost of living and their electricity and gas and other energy bills are going through the roof. But the government for ideological reasons is just unwilling to consider a technology that is widely deployed in North America and Asia and Europe and all around the world, which is successfully bringing down emissions and providing that reliable baseload energy. James, we'll leave it there. James Patterson, appreciate your time.